Hi, my name is Pranav, you are watching Science is Dope and today being National Science Day, let's look at the entire history of India with a timeline and see all the science that's genuine, that has well documented, reviewed and accepted evidence behind it, starting with the Vedic period. Now, Jyotisha is a word that's commonly associated with astrology and so it's a common misconception that this work is astrological. It's not. It's an astronomical work. It describes ways to measure the positions of stars for determining timings for performing sacrifices. The predictive horoscopic astrology that we call Vedic astrology has nothing to do with Vedanga Jyotisha. It's something we got from the Greeks and I cover all these in detail in this video. In fact, the Vedanga Jyotisha makes no mention of horoscopes or Rashis. So what does it say? The Vedic astronomers described units of time uh, all the way from the Yuga, which is a system of five years, all the way down to uh, divisions of a day. They described seasons, solstices, and they used a nakshatra system for denoting stars. Now the reason why the dates associated with the Vedanga Jyotisha are so vague is because uh, the astronomical events mentioned in the work um, correspond to events that occurred around 1400 BCE but the work itself was probably compiled and written down somewhere around 200 BC. You'll notice that this is a repeating pattern for many of the works that I mentioned in this video. The Kalpa Vedanga, which is an ancillary text to the Vedas, has a section called the Shulba Sutras, uh, which were composed between 800 and 500 CE. These texts, of which the Baudayana is the oldest, contain descriptions of how to design yatnas or sacrificial altars. The geometry in these texts is extraordinary and one of the things of note here is that this text gives the Pythagoras theorem centuries before Pythagoras. Along with this, there are many more geometrical results like squaring the circle and algebraic results like rational approximations for irrational numbers like the square root of 2. Now it's very important to note that this is not the same as Vedic Mathematics which is a book that was published in 1965 which claims its origins are from the Vedas but talks about none of these things and instead talks about mathematics that was developed much later. I talk about it in detail in this video. This is a false claim. Now we come to the most advanced medical science that was available in that time, Ayurveda. I've talked all about it in detail over here in this video, uh, so I'm not gonna go into detail here except mentioning that two of the most important people in this period were Shushita and Charaka, who were the father of surgery and father of medicine respectively. Next are the Hindu numerals which were used in India between the 1st and the 4th century CE and spread to Europe by the Arab traders around the 9th century. These are primitive versions of the digits that we use today. This along with the use of zero, which is all most people know but India's contributions, um, and the decimal system were used around the 5th century CE during the Gupta period but mathematics was only just beginning in India. The 5th century onwards was when mathematics and astronomy truly flourished in India. Notable mathematicians arrived on the scene with each person inspiring the ones that came after him. Aryabhata, Brahmagupta, Bhaskara, uh, mathematicians from the Kerala School of Mathematics, Sri Dharacharya, there are lots of names that I can mention. These works however failed to get the recognition that they should have had the medium of the printing press been present at that time. I've linked some sources below uh, if you're interested in learning about them. 
The Sultanate of Mysore under Hyder Ali and later his son Tipu Sultan was the first to deploy iron cased missiles uh, for military use. This was used in the Anglo Mysore War against the British East India Company. It was this technology that was later used by the British to improve their own rocketry. During a public demonstration in 1895 in the town hall of Kolkata, uh, Jagadish Chandra Bose was the first person to use wireless signals using radio waves to ring an electric bell. This was the beginning of wireless technology. Now he wasn't interested in uh, patenting his work, so the credit went to Italian inventor G. Marconi. No list of Indian intellectuals is complete without mentioning the mammoth of a mathematical mind that was Srinivas Ramanujan. He grew up in impoverished conditions in isolation from the advancements in math that was there in the world. But he still managed to do phenomenal research and compiled nearly 3900 results influencing the fields of mathematical analysis, number theory, infinite series and continued fractions. Later in life, he became a fellow of the Royal Society in London and the Trinity College in Cambridge. Sadly though, the world lost his great mind at the young age of just 32. In 1930, the Nobel Prize was awarded for the first time to a person from Asia, C.V. Raman, for the discovery of the Raman effect, which was a way in which light scattered that he discovered with his student K.S. Krishnan. Now, he made this discovery on the 28th of February 1928 and that day is today, observed in India as National Science Day. We've also got a list of scientists of the 1900s who made massive impacts in their fields. Satyendranath Bose, who worked with Einstein in the development of the Bose-Einstein statistics and the boson, which is a kind of particle in the standard model of physics, is named after him. Homi Jahangir Baba was the father of the Indian nuclear program. Uh, Vikram Sarabhai was the father of the Indian space program. Meghnath Saha was an astrophysicist who developed the Saha ionization equation which is used to describe the conditions in stars. Prafulla Chandra Roy is the father of chemical science in India. And of course, APJ Abdul Kalam is known as the Missile Man of India. He was uh, the chief science administrator of the Indian space program and became the president of India in 2002. Now, the next uh, item in this list is not a person. It's an organization that we should all be proud of. The ISRO, the crowning jewel of uh, scientific achievement from India, the brainchild of Vikram Sarabhai, the Indian equivalent of NASA, the Indian Space Research Organization. From humble beginnings to a mammoth organization that reached Mars in its very first attempt using the Mangalyaan, the very first time any country has ever done this, that too had a fraction of the cost of any other such mission. Its moon mission, the Chandrayaan-1, made the discovery of water ice on the lunar surface. The PSLV C-37 launch vehicle set a world record by launching 104 satellites in a single shot. Needless to say, ISRO is pretty cool. It fills me with pride knowing that I come from a culture with a rich scientific heritage. But at the same time, I'm disappointed when I hear false facts about what that scientific heritage is. For example, there's a character called Sanjaya in the Mahabharata who sees uh, the events of the Kurukshetra battle from miles away. And this is often touted as the existence of live streaming technology and the internet back in that time. 
the people who spread this false information i don't know if they're doing it because they honestly believe in it or they're spreading uh, these false facts to achieve a sense of cultural superiority that can justify their political beliefs and actions someone said that the best way to fight misinformation is with good information with that said i'll see you in the next one till then remember science is dope